At this point, it feels like the MCU is too big to flop, as Marvel has hit upon a formula that delivers consistently good to great movies that all further the overall interconnected story Marvel is telling. It's an unprecedented feat that Marvel has accomplished and the success shows no signs of slowing down. Fittingly then, many of Hollywood's A-listers are involved in the MCU and many more are sure to join along the way. Playing Tony Stark, Iron Man has made Robert Downey Jr. an icon and one of the highest paid actors in history. And the MCU has made stars out of Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, and even Chris Pratt. Even elder Hollywood icons like Robert Redford, Michael Douglas, and Michelle Pfeiffer have become entwined in the MCU, which goes some way to show in the power Marvel wields in Hollywood. It also stands to reason that there are certain rules and regulations that actors must abide by if they want to be welcomed into the Marvel's embrace. And these rules only increased with the 2009 purchase of Marvel Entertainment by The Mac. With the House of Mouse calling these shots, things jumped up several notches, and these are the 10 weird rules every MCU actor has to follow. Before we start, let's make sure you follow us by clicking on the like button below the video and get more sweet content from Animated Times. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Caravella. Go ahead and find me on social, On Air Andrew. All right, let's go. Coming in at number 10, you are contractually obligated to appear for reshoots at any given point. Now, another obligation that's written into the MCU contracts concerns reshoots. Namely, actors must make themselves available for them if called upon. Sometimes when the director is assembling a film, they might realize they need more shots to make everything flow better, or entirely new scenes might need to be filmed to incorporate new story elements. In this case, MCU actors have to come back for the reshoots, no matter what else they're doing. It angered particularly actor Idris Elba but who publicly spoke of how filming reshoots in Thor The Dark World only a day after playing Nelson Mandela in Long Walk to Freedom didn't sit well with him. His exact words were, it ripped my heart out, and that he told his agent, this is enduring, man. I don't want to do this. Oh dear. And at number nine, you must say yes to any cameo appearances in other MCU films. Okay, for fans, the most exciting thing about the MCU is its interconnectivity. It's just like the comics have always been, with all the beloved heroes and villains existing in the same fictional universe. Wait, this is fiction? Their stories can cross over and connect in exciting ways, and characters aren't restricted to appearing in only one series of movies. They can show up anywhere across the MCU. Therefore, the cameos have become a big deal for fans, with everyone delighting at the Captain America public service announcements in Spider-Man Homecoming or Sam Wilson Falcon's hilarious skirmish with Scott Lang and Ant-Man. The MCU actors are contractually obliged to agree to these cameos as they supposedly don't count toward the overall amount of movies they signed up for. At number 8, you will be expected to sign on for multiple movies in one contract. So it's common practice for MCU lead actors to sign multi-picture deals. For example, Samuel L. Jackson signed up for a whopping nine films as Nick Fury. The number of movies other actors have on their contracts isn't as well known, though it's been reported that six film deals are the norm these days. Marvel is keen to sign actors to multiple films because if they go on to become important members of the universe, it lessens the need for contract renegotiations at a later date. They've already had this happen with Robert Downey Jr., the linchpin of the entire MCU. He initially signed a four-picture deal, but has now appeared in nine MCU films, meaning his contract has been renegotiated multiple times, with a few extra zeros added on each time, no doubt. At number seven, you will be expected to maintain a good public image. Now, generally, fans want to believe that the people playing their heroes on the big screen are good people in real life. It's just human nature. We want to believe that these famous actors are relatable and likable, that they are just like you and me. Well, at least you, only with better paid jobs and high levels of charisma. Disney and Marvel wants their fans to believe that as well, which is why all the MCU actors are expected to maintain a good moral public image. To be fair, most of the Marvel actors do seem like genuine admirable people, which is why it didn't come off as a publicity stunt when, for example, Chris Pratt and Chris Evans dressed as Star-Lord and Captain America, respectively, to visit a Boston Cancer Charity and a Seattle Children's Hospital. They're just good dudes doing nice things. 
At number six, let the stunt performers do the stunts. Okay, so summer 2018 saw the release of Mission Impossible Fallout, the latest clear example of Tom Cruise being a stunt enthusiast. Those movies are now largely sold on the back of Cruise's dedication to doing the majority of his own crazy stunts, and they are truly spectacles to behold. The 2000s in general have seen an increased amount of actors doing as many of their own stunts as they are allowed to do, and it's definitely exciting to watch, but on the MCU movies, insurance premiums for actors are sky high, and the most dangerous stunts are left to the trained professionals. The actors do a lot of their own stuff, but generally don't have the pull of a Tom Cruise, who can convince an entire studio to let him hang off the side of an airplane as it takes off. And with that being said, number five, Disney mandates that your character will never, ever smoke on screen. So in 2001, the Marvel editor-in-chief, Joe Quesada, laid out policy concerning smoking in Marvel comic books. No main character was allowed to be seen smoking, with Quesada specifically name-checking Wolverine. Now, aside from in the Max line, where Nick Fury could still have cigars, the Marvel Studios movies never seemed to pay attention to this rule, however, as Obadiah Stain was seen smoking a Dogie in Iron Man. However, in 2009, Disney bought Marvel Entertainment, and in 2015, Disney CEO Bob Iger announced that they would be enforcing their own in-house no-smoking rule in the MCU movies going forward. So unless this rule is relaxed, Sam Jackson's Nick Fury definitely won't be shown lighting up anytime soon. Maybe a vape? I don't know. At number four, confidentiality is everything, so you won't be allowed to take a script home to read. Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Wanda Maximoff in the MCU, was interviewed on Jimmy Kimmel Live in April 2018 and revealed some surprising details on Marvel's quest for secrecy regarding Avengers Infinity War. She said certain cast members were offered the chance to read the full script in one five-hour sitting on an iPad in an empty room after checking in their cell phones at the door. She thought this process sounded unpleasant, so just asked for Marvel to give her Wanda's pages. Some cast members did choose to do the private read, including Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch, but Paul Bettany, you know, the guy who plays Vision, then revealed that other cast members were given fake scripts with erroneous plot twists in order to prevent real details leaking. We could not complete this list without number three. You may be taken to hidden shooting locations in unmarked vans. Now, Elizabeth Olsen was also refreshingly honest about some of the tactics used by Marvel to maintain privacy while filming Avengers Infinity War. At Ace Comic Con in Seattle, she and Paul Bettany were interviewed by geek icon Kevin Smith. Love him. And Olsen revealed she had absolutely no idea what was supposed to happen during Infinity War's ending until the very day they filmed it. Directors Joe and Anthony Russo bundled all the actors into an air-conditioned van, told them the ending, and then revealed they were traveling to the shooting location right then and there. This must be difficult for actors, as they constantly need to be able to adapt and get into their character's headspace on the fly, without all the knowledge that could potentially help, you know, like the performance. At number two, you fulfill your obligation even if the director you championed is let go. Now, Natalie Portman's falling out with Marvel Studios has been well publicized, and it stands as a great example of what is expected of an actor even if they are not happy with the studio's decisions. Portman championed the hiring of Patty Jenkins to direct Thor The Dark World, and was reportedly deeply upset when Jenkins left the project over creative differences. Jenkins would go on to direct the excellent and culturally important Wonder Woman, so her decision not to make a Thor movie that she didn't believe in was best of both parties, I guess. But Portman still had to fulfill her obligation to appear in the movie, which was arguably the worst MCU effort, then was unceremoniously written out of the MCU with a throwaway line in Thor Ragnarok. And last but not least, you will give up the mantle if it's required. So when news broke out that Marvel and Sony had worked out a deal to allow Spider-Man to appear in the MCU, fans were ecstatic. Finally, Marvel's premier superhero was coming home where he belonged. Andrew Garfield, who played the character twice in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, didn't return to the role a third time, and Tom Holland was cast as the new MCU wall crawler. While it was supposedly always Marvel's intention to recast and go younger with the role, Garfield was apparently considered and not immediately fired, as many fans believed. However, once a decision had been made by Marvel Studios, the actor had to fall in line with the powers that be and allow the mantle to be passed to someone new, whether he truly wanted to or not. And this is going to wrap up our list of 10 weird rules every MCU actor has to follow. What did we miss? Let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already liked our page, you got to like and share this video. And if you did like what you saw, go check out more awesome content on our page. And as always, thanks for watching.